Hey friends, welcome back to day number 9. Today we're going to learn about Rasputin shift. So let's see first what Rasputin shift is used for. You can use Rasputin shifts to specify the premium pay for the time worked for the expected period of rest. What that means is if an employee is expected to rest but is being asked to work, then the amount of time that he works can be paid as the premium pay or can be considered as the premium pay because the employee was expected to take a rest, but now he is working during his rest time. So whatever the time he spends working, that can be considered as a premium pay. That being said, let's go right into the system and see how we can configure rest between shift. To access rest between shift from the setup, expand pay policies. And under the work rule building block, you will see rest between the shifts right here. So let's open the rest between the shift building block. And before we get into the rest between the shifts, rest between shift, and go about configuring this particular building block, I will like to show you, as I always do, how things look like before we set up or configure this particular rule in the system. So as you know, rest between the shifts or rest between shifts can be used for creating a premium pay situation. If the employee doesn't get enough rest or if the employee is expected to rest after his shift and before the start of the next shift but is being asked to work during that time we can create the the rule in the system as such that the employee will get premium pay for working during the rest period however if there is no rest between the shift how will the system behave so let's see that first so I'm on an employee's time card and let's say this employee works from 12 p.m. to 9 p.m. every day. So that's 12 to 9. And next day he comes at 12 p.m. but works all the way till 11 p.m. at night. And the next day he comes in the morning at around 8 and then works and completes his shift at around 9 p.m. So on day one, if you can see, he has worked for typical nine hours his day. On the second day, he started at 12, but ended his shift at around 11 p.m. On day number three, he started his shift at 8 a.m. Now if you consider the end time and the start time, the rest between the shift, these two shift, is around about uh, 9 hours, right? 11 p.m. to 8 a.m., the difference is 9 hours. So, if within these 9 hours, or in the system, let's say there is a rule that we are going to create, or let's say there is a rule that is already being created, which is the employee should be getting minimum of 10 hours of rest, between the shift. So in this case, the employee is not getting 10 hours of rest between the shift because he is uh, punching out at 11 p.m. and then next day coming in at 8 a.m. So the rest between the shift is just nine hours. So in that case, this 13 hours that he, has, he is working from eight to nine should be paid as premium pay or maybe as overtime or or a double time pay code. However, as of now, we haven't set up that in the system. So this is how typically you will see once you have to configure the rest between the shift. Before we configure that, you at least get to see how uh, the system looks like if there is no rest between the shift. So with that, in mind, let's go right into the system and go into the rest between shift building block. And let's start to configure this particular building block, rest between the shift. Now, the first thing that you might observe here that there are few fields which are mandatory, like required rest, unscheduled shift count as, apply premium to and there are few more and the other ones like these these are not mandatory but again it depends on the 
the requirement or the client requirement that uh, you are working with or the business requirement if that is sleep free but you can you can just complete the ones which are mandatory ones which we are going to do in our in our demo today so let's start with the name so let's give uh, a name where it will say demo now as i told you we are creating this rest between the shift for scenarios where there is uh, not just the client requirement but the requirement could be from your uh, labor law there is a labor law or maybe uh, a union law or, or maybe a, a requirement from the unions or maybe uh, the, the policies from your uh, legislation which requires proper rest for employees so it all boils down to not just the requirement uh, not just um, your your uh, creating any building block in chronos for that matter you as a consultant should also be well versed with the the local laws for the country that you are implementing for because the client may ask you uh, at times and you may have to tell them that if you're working in this country there could be a labor law or there could be a legislative requirement which you need to abide by so in countries like uh, australia or us they are pretty strict with their labor laws so if you are having rest between the shift the first thing that you need to define is the required rest so the required rest here you need to define the amount of rest time that is required by law or by your company policies as they defined in the norms so the required rest let's say for now is 10 hours so in our example for the rest between shift where we're going to create we're going to say the required rest is 10 that means between the out time and the next in time the rest should be for minimum of 10 hours now the same as a thumb rule you can remember that whatever required rest you are giving here the same thing has to be given in the rest interval window as well so enter the same thing so remember as a thumb rule whatever amount that you are entering here the number of hours the same has to be given in the rest interval window as well so required rest and rest interval window should be same or can be same you don't have to give any other number um, and as a thumb rule you can remember that both these values should be the same and then you have this radio button here for unscheduled shift to count as now you can specify whether unscheduled shift should count as work or rest unscheduled shifts that are specified as rest are included in the premium pay calculations if you select work then it's going to count as work and it will not count as the premium pay situation so if you are also if you also want if an employee is working on a saturday or a sunday which is unscheduled day if you still want that also to be considered during the rest between the shift then select the radio button as a rest then you have apply premium to and here you have two radio buttons amount of denied rest or entire shift i'm going to select entire shift if you select amount of denied rest and if the employee was supposed to take a rest of 10 hours however the employee only took rest for five hours in that case if you select this then he will get the premium pay only for five hours but what if he works beyond five hours right so more often than not he if he continues his shift after uh, five hours or maybe after x number of hours then that hours should also be considered as premium pay so you should select the entire shift here then the other mandatory field is continuous rest interval now it depends on the 
the the requirement where in 99.99 percent of the time you will always select yes what that means is the rest between the shifts will keep on checking each day it won't stop at any particular day when it meets or when it comes across a situation where there is a there is no rest between shift of 10 hours so that is that is what it says continuous rest interval and you will select yes and then the last mandatory field that you need to select here is how to compute rest length then you have shift start and shift end should it use the rounded punch actual punch or scheduled punch so always remember to use the actual punch both for your shift start and your shift end so it's going to select it's going to check your actual punch that you are entering or using to uh, mobile device or clock or timestamp it's going to use the actual punch then here there are a few options that you see which is minimum rest premium maximum rest premium and minimum shift length this is not mandatory and uh, but i'll just give you a brief information of what these values what if we enter values in these what that will be used for so if you enter a value here in the minimum rest premium so that means you are telling the system that hey if the employee is working during the time he is not he's supposed to rest and if you enter a value here let's say you enter uh, five hours or maybe any x number of hours so that so you are telling the system that we are maybe based on the client policy you are guaranteeing the employee five hours of premium pay minimum rest premium so you're defining say and saying that five hours so irrespective of the time that you work i will pay you five hours of uh, hour as premium pay that is what it means if you put here and then you have maximum rest period or maximum rest premium the maximum premium if employees do not meet the required rest condition again you can give a value here and finally you have the minimum shift length you can define or put a value here for example if you put um, eight hours minimum shift length should be eight hours however if the employee works for less than eight hours then the employee will not be entitled for for the premium pay situation if the employee is working for eight hours then the rest between shift will this configuration will kick in so if you define any values here these are like uh, some of them are like qualifiers this one minimum shift length and the other ones are defining values for the maximum and minimum rest premium so these values are not mandatory but the ones which are necessary for setting up the rest between the shift is your required rest again remember the amount that you enter in the requires required rest should be the same in the rest interval window as well and then you will say for the unscheduled shift count as you will put as rest and the apply premium to will be entire shift unless there is some requirement where it should be otherwise and then you can select actual punches so this is how you can set up the rest between the shifts however we will also see how it reflects on the time card so let us let us save this so once you save this you need to assign this in your in your uh, combination rule as you might have seen in the previous tutorials which wherein we have considered schedule deviation so likewise once you create this rest between shift this is the one that we just created you need to assign that in your combination rules so let's go right into our combination rule and later on in uh, my next tutorial i will explain in detail about the combination rule and the other building blocks that were that we are using along with the rest between shift so once we have the combination rule defined and the rest between shift included in that we need to tell this 
in the system that when there is a situation where the employee is working without 10 hours of rest, what pay code do you want the system to generate or what pay code should be generated? So here you can in the pay code distribution, you can define what should be the pay code. If he is working his normal hours, that means without any um, rest between shift, that is his default working hours, he works nine hours or eight hours a day. In that case, you can pay him regular or his normal hours. So you can select those from the pay code edit. Normal hours. And then for our particular rest between shift, we will say double time. So if he is supposed to rest, but he is asked to work, then he will be getting double pay or that will be considered as the premium pay situation. For that, the pay code used will be double time. All right. So we've created that. Let's go and uh, go to our final work rules. In the work rule, we will just assign the rest between the shift that we just created. So let's open this. These are the steps. Again, you will have to follow whenever you do any kind of configuration or whenever you build any building blocks in the system, especially with the premium pay situations, your overtimes, your zones, rest between the shifts, schedule deviation, you will have to follow all these steps. So if you are new and if you haven't had a chance to uh, look into my previous uh, tutorials, you will understand how these things work and um, especially the last one, but I'm going to explain all of these in detail in the specific videos that I will be creating for this. So now we've assigned our rest between shift in our work rule as well. So let's go and check that in our time card. So now you can see that, right? So 12 to nine, that's the default working, uh, typical working hours. And then from 12 to 11, that day has worked for almost 11 hours but without the complete rest of 10 hours he has worked the next day uh, starting at 8 a.m so these hours that you see should be paid as double time so let's save this and check whether our configuration fetches us the result that we are looking in the system and there you go so you can see at the bottom, there are two pay codes that are generated. One is double time and one is the normal hours. And you can see the hours which are associated with double time, which is 13 hours and which are nothing but these hours that you see, 13 hours. So that is how you can check, validate and confirm your configuration. So this is always recommended whenever you do any configuration, always validate that and check whether you're getting the right values or not. You can also make these as daily and check, click on the, the day and you can see for that day, the pay code that is being generated is double time. If you put it for the other day, it will be just normal hours, right? Because there is no, and for this, this day as well, it is normal hours because he has, he has been getting proper rest. But for this day, when there was no rest, of 10 hours, the system is generating double time or premium pay, it will, it will be considered as the premium pay. So well, when you are setting up the rest between the shift, the important thing to consider again, just to have a quick recap, is the rest window. With that rest window, if there is any troubleshooting that you need to do, the first thing that you need to check is the rest window. And then the second thing that you should also check, especially if you are considering unscheduled days, then make sure the radio button is selected as rest. I hope you found this information in this video tutorial informative. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and share your comments, feedback, and uh, any questions or comments that you may have about this or anything related to Kronos in, your, in the comment section and uh, share your feedback as well. And please, uh, if you would want to know or learn more about Kronos, subscribe to this channel. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.